What's up, you two? Welcome back to the trucking journey. Unfortunately, you won't see a whole lot of trucking in this video. Um, I'm recovering from an elbow surgery that I had three weeks ago. I had some ligament damage that goes up to my, uh, what used to be rock and tricep muscle. It's kind of deteriorating and turning to mush now. And also bone spurs. Had a bunch of them in my elbow. One particular right on the tip, which prevented me from laying my elbow on a, a flat surface such as a table. So I had it repaired. It was three weeks ago today. I optimistically underestimated the repair time or the healing time that was going to be required for this type of surgery. I thought I'd be back kickboxing and doing push-ups a week later. The way the doctors and physical therapists are talking, it's probably going to be to the, the end of the year. Although I do, you know, I have a lot more movement and it. it's healed significantly from what it was that, that first day. But the plan is, due to uh, financial responsibilities that I have, I ain't going to be able to go to the end of the year without making any cheddar. And I really don't think there's enough volume of uh, video content that GMP wants right now to keep me busy. So I guess what's going to happen is I got to get back trucking. I'm waiting to hear back from safety now, looking to get the green light so I, I can get cleared. As far as driving the truck, I'm not concerned with that. I, I can handle that. I've been driving the Chevy. You know, I can hold steering wheels and grip. I just can't straighten my arm, can't really do weight bearing things with my right arm while this ligament is healing. So opening and closing trailer doors, messing around with landing gear, airlines, that's the kind of stuff that would give me the most difficulty. I'm thinking I can probably handle it left-handed or, you know, not get in too big of a hurry and not injure myself because if I don't get back to work, I'm going to injure my credit rating and um, <laughs> my relationship with people that expect money from me on the regular basis. But the good news is since we ain't out trucking and I can't really handle cameras and everything that well with, you know, being one-armed and everything, but I do have a video I'm going to share with you guys. This one is also on the GMP channel which is uh, the company channel that I've, I've uh, I don't know, I've worked on about 50 or 60 different videos. This is the newest one. It features yours truly talking about APUs that we have on our trucks, which there's more than one different kind. We kind of break down the, the differences in this video, and I hope that it is something that all of you enjoy. But thanks for watching, and uh, feel free to drop a comment below. Welcome back to the GMP Trucking Channel. I'm Trucker Jim. In this video, we're going to be talking about APUs, auxiliary power units. Now, for many years, this is what you would find on the side of a GMP truck. This is the Thermaking Tri Pack, which is basically a diesel generator for the sleeper cab. There's no additional diesel tank. This just taps into the fuel tank system of the truck. Why does GMP have APUs on the majority of our sleeper cab trucks? Well, there's a lot of advantages. One is the truck does not have to idle. The advantages of that, it's a major fuel saving cost. Idling a truck uses between 0.7 and 1.4 gallons every single hour where the APU only uses about 0.1 gallons an hour, which equates to only about a gallon for your 10 hour reset. In addition to clogging filters much faster and being more wear and tear on the engine, the APU is gonna prolong the life of the engine of your truck. And most importantly for you drivers, it's gonna keep the sleeper cab comfortable and it's gonna allow you to power all your devices. Modern day drivers have much more power requirements than drivers of the past. We have drivers with flat screen TVs, PlayStations, charging devices, cookers, microwaves. For many of our truckers, these trucks are their home away from home. But the diesel powered APU is a very simple system that you don't really need to know a whole lot about drivers. The main thing you need to know about your APU is to how to turn it on. And there's a couple of switches. Here under the box, 
on the side, you can check your oil level, but there's also an on-off switch. The control system for the AP unit is back inside the sleeper cab. Very simple operation. Really only has three knobs to control fan speed, temperature setting, and whether you want it on cool or warm. To turn the, the system on and off, you simply just press a button in, press a button off. If you're ever in a situation where you get warning indicators, sometimes they're yellow or red triangles, first thing you do before you go call and break down is turn the system off, let it sit for a minute or so, turn it back on, and everything should be working up to par. If you're having trouble with it, your first line of defense, if you're anywhere close to the rear terminal here, these are the guys you want to check in with. Now 100% of our fleet does not have APUs, such as day cabs. No APUs for a day cab because once again, it's a generator for the sleeper of your truck. However, there are about 20 sleeper trucks still in our fleet. These are some of the older trucks that were originally team trucks that do not have APUs. And the reason is, APUs are not cheap, is the reason most mega carriers do not provide APUs for their drivers. They're about eleven dollars to $12,000 for each unit. So for team trucks that really don't stop moving, we decided not to invest that money compared to our solo driver trucks where they're shutting down, doing a minimum of a 10 hour break each and every shift. For these few remaining trucks, sleeper trucks in our fleet that do not have APUs, the idle restriction has been turned off on there. So you can idle accordingly, so you can keep the cab cool in the summer, warm in the winter. The remaining trucks in the fleet are limited to about a five minute idle time. After that, the truck will automatically cut off and you'll have to restart it if you need it. But with the APU, you generally don't need that. It has enough power to power your TVs, to be able to charge your devices, to keep the climate control system going your entire 10 hour break. But if you're using something that requires a little more power, such as boiling water, maybe cooking something in the microwave, that may trip your inverter, you'll be alerted by a beep, and just simply you'll just need to crank the truck up to perform those power power draining activities. But if you have any questions, drivers, about your Therma King unit, there is a very detailed video here on the GMP channel that Todd Yancey from Therma King goes in detail on the operations of the Therma King. Starting around 2009, we started getting new trucks in that are coming in with factory installed APUs and, well, drivers, they work a little different. Such as one of the new Cascadias. This is the previous driver of the year truck, and you'll notice there's no APU on, on the side of it. But don't think we're gonna leave our, leave our drivers of the year hanging with no APU, because you'll notice up top, the fan, that's a dead giveaway that a truck has an APU, whether it's the diesel power like we're used to or the new battery power. Now since this unit does not have a diesel powered APU, it has batteries. And there's multiple locations batteries can be depending upon the, the manufacturer, but in the freight liner, they're under here. For drivers, there's really no reason for you to dig into the battery system here. Just so you know how that works, these lift up, there's a protective top covering the batteries, remove that, and that gains access to the battery systems. That will power the APU unit. For 2019, GMP has invested in a lot of new equipment, like Volvos. Now these are day cabs here, so they're not gonna have an APU, but the new ones are coming equipped with refrigerators in a day cab. It's a drawer under the passenger seat. But as far as the sleeper trucks, 2019 and beyond, all trucks are gonna be coming with refrigerators, inverters, and other amenities. The Volvo sleeper cabs are very similar to design to what we showed you on the freight liners where there's gonna be a battery pack up under the catwalk. However, Peterbilt is trying to earn the business of GMP and we've added 15 new Peterbilt to the fleet and they also have a factory installed APU. These 
are a little different. Peterbilt has a battery pack that's mounted on the driver's side compared to, well, what we're used to on the passenger side. But inside these, inside is the battery pack and that's what's gonna power everything in the sleeper, including the climate control system. Now, due to the placement of the battery pack on the driver's side, it kind of reconfigured things and your airline hookups are on the opposite side. <laughs> Any driver that's got one of these Peterbilts, let us know how that's working out for you. Now, if you have one of the new trucks that's equipped with an APU, whether it's a battery or diesel, one thing you don't see is there's a solar panel. In addition to the engine running that recharges the batteries, the solar panel helps in that process as well. But once again, drivers, the biggest thing that you need to know about your APU is how to turn it on, and especially if you have one of the battery-powered units, to have it in the auto start mode. You'll find that switch up at the dash versus back in the sleeper. But on the battery-powered, what that allows the units to do as you get close to the end of your 10 hour break, the voltage may be getting low and the truck will start itself automatically to keep everything charged up and running properly. And also, if you are using items that pull a little extra power, most of these inverters are around 1500 watts, you may need to idle the truck to boil your water, to cook your microwave TV dinners. And then one last tip to get the most use out of your APU, which the biggest advantage is keeping your sleeper cool in the summer, warm in the winter, so you can relax on your 10 hour break, get good rest, and go in and give a full day's efforts the next day. A couple little tips on that. If you know you're getting ready to shut down, especially if it's in the summer, it's a 90 plus degree day, turn your air condition on full blast for about 10 minutes prior to shutting down. More than likely, if you're having it back in a hole, you're gonna roll your windows down. Some of that's gonna escape. So after you do get shut down, roll the windows up, let the truck idle for a few more minutes with it on blast, and then take advantage of the curtains that your trucks are equipped with. There's a middle row of curtains to separate the sleeper from the cab, and then also you have curtains that will close off the windshield to give you more privacy, but also it's going to hold that desired temperature in the cab and keep you a lot more comfortable for the duration of your break. If there's any questions that hasn't been covered in this video, drivers, please feel free to drop your comments below. We will be staying on top of those comments. All right, drivers, I hope that information on the APU systems here at GMP was helpful to you. Just a reminder, if you have one of the new trucks that has the battery-powered APUs, if you have one of the international LTs with that, there is an auto start switch up on the dash. You'll need to press and hold that for a moment till it lights up green, then it's in the auto start mode. When it gets low in voltage, the truck will crank up automatically to get the batteries charged back up. If you're in a Volvo that does not have the auto start switch, when the volts get low, it will alert you. You'll need to crank the truck up manually, and at that time, it will begin to charge the batteries back up and extend that idle threshold while the voltage is low. But on your diesel engines, just have that in the battery save mode, and it should never let you down. But everyone, thanks a lot for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one.